Now what I'd like to do is show the internals of uh, some hydroforce valves and, and show why out of all the valves we tested, these are, are more restrictive than the others. Now a, a coil goes over this, as you can see, there's different styles of coil, but the coil goes over that and it's an electromagnet. It energizes that and sucks up the uh, internals and, and causes the valve to switch. We've got these small holes here and that's where the oil goes through and so that's why these valves are fairly restrictive. Now you can get a different style that uh, we'd like to point out. There's slots here, elongated slots, and that's what allows the oil to pass through versus these uh, holes here. And so this uh, style of hydroforce is going to be a lot uh, less restrictive, but as the numbers show, it's still more restrictive than the other style of valve that we have. Now what I'd like to do is show the internals of the Golden Fuels valves and uh, show the similarities and how these things are put together, uh, especially versus the Hydroforce. This is a much simpler design and a lot less uh, that can go wrong. Let's go ahead and take these screws out. This is the, the small size Golden Fuels valve. It, as you can see here, this piece, there's a replaceable O-ring right there for the cap. And then there's a plunger with a spring. That spring comes out. There's an O-ring right there and an O-ring or a rubber uh, seal right there. And that right there is the one moving part that actually moves up and down. If you look inside the, uh, the valve here, what happens is, is that this uh, goes in there and it moves. And so as this electromagnet is energized, it pulls it up, it closes off as it pulls up, this seal here closes off around there and it closes this port off, but allows this port to flow down through here. And as this is in a relaxed position, it, and there goes my spring, it seals off against that bottom port. And so you see, instead of having little holes, we actually have a gap for the oil to flow around. And because of the uh, very limited moving parts, there's not a whole lot that can go wrong with these valves. And you have three rubber O-rings and a spring. This whole valve could be rebuilt in the matter of, of you know, a minute or two. Let's go ahead and take our industrial size valve here. And as we look, we've got an O-ring, very similar design. O-ring that sits in there. This uh, plunger here sits around there and closes off the port. And as we take this apart, we show you what's inside. We have a spring, we have our plunger, O-ring, and very familiar looking uh, seal around the end of the plunger. And as we look inside, very similar things going to happen here. We've got uh, this port that is accessed through the center, this outer port, and as the thing is actuated, it shunts the fuel around. All right, over the years, we've used several valves, and there's uh, pros and cons to every valve. And one of the problems that we found with the Hydroforce valve uh, is that it has internal leakage, and we're going to demonstrate what that does. Now, under most circumstances, if you're using a Hydroforce valve, uh, you probably won't know what's going on. You are going to be using a little more diesel than you would uh, if you had a different sort of valve. And it's not necessarily a deal breaker. I've still got some of these on uh, one of my vehicles. But uh, the new valves we have definitely overcome the problem that the Hydroforce has. So we just wanted to demonstrate uh, what's going on here. All right, so we've got a Hydroforce valve here. And as we'll show, <coughs> we've got our vacuum gauge here. As we pump, it's not building up any uh, vacuum because we have uh, open ports here. So we're going to go ahead and, and close one of these ports. We're going to pull up some vacuum, go up to about uh, 15, and we're going to watch. And our needle is dropping. Okay? And the reason is because this valve internally is bypassing and it's sucking air, so it doesn't take much to overcome this valve. Now, if I cover both of these holes, we're at about 20 inches there, and as you can see, it's holding. It's not going anywhere. Now, as I let off that hole, it starts sucking down, and now it slows when I put it back on. Okay, that's the port that's supposed to be closed. So, as you can see, these valves <coughs> are not tight. 
And what happens is, is that if you're running on vegetable oil, it's going to be pulling a little diesel. Or if you're running on diesel, it can pull a little bit of vegetable oil. And the biggest thing is, though, your return valve, uh, you can sometimes draw depending on how you have your return configured, you can sometimes draw fuel through your return or even draw air. That's where you're going to notice the problems most with these valves is if you're low on fuel in one tank or the other, you can actually suck air into your system and it can leave you beside the road. We'll go ahead and take our new golden valves here and uh, we'll do the same demonstration. Let's see, this is going to be our normally closed port. Let's see, that's our common. Okay, that's our common port. So, obviously we're wide open. We're coming through the three port here. So, I'll put my thumb over there. We'll take it up to over 20. And as you can see, it is not pulling through that third port. We'll take it even higher harder to get these things much past about 28 but there's 25 and as you can see she's holding rock solid and I just have my finger over one port there open it up of course it drops so now this here's our normally closed port Take it up 25 inches of vacuum, and she's holding steady. Okay, and I want to quickly just contrast that. Let's release our vacuum. To our normally closed port over here. We can't even get it up to 20 because it's leaking so fast. And it just drops down. And lest anybody think that it's just because my hose isn't tight, we'll go ahead and uh, see if we can get these sealed. Okay. Now it's holding when I got my fingers over there. Okay, she's holding. So that's just the contrast there. No fingers on it, it's dropping. We take it off of here. Put it on there, no fingers on it. There's it's over 20, but as you can see, I'll take it up to 25. Rock solid. So that's just uh, the last little test. As you can see, the size, these are physically quite a bit smaller, a lot more compact unit. But the, we've got the vacuum tests that show that these uh, hydroforce valves do have internal leakage. And this is just one more uh, reason that we're very pleased to introduce these valves. I myself uh, had these on one of my rigs and, and learned the hard way that if you empty one tank that it'll suck air because of that internal leakage problem. And now we've got a product that will overcome that. So you can take this information, do with it what you will, but we wanted to show flow tests and uh, vacuum tests so that you guys can get a feel for what's going on with these valves. So uh, hope you enjoyed this production and we hope to see you next time. Thank you.